Hey guys, it's Harrison. Um, today I am here with Anna Sebastian from The Artesian in London. We're going to have a quick chat about the current situation in London, what Anna is doing, what The Artesian is doing, and what the London bar scene is doing. So welcome, Anna. It's great to have you. Thank you so much. And thank you for asking me to be on here. It's nice to sort of see you virtually. Of course. So just to jump right into it, uh, have you ever made a little drink for yourself during this conversation? <laughs> I did. I already made myself. I went kind of classic with a Negroni because it's right now in London, the weather is like 20 degrees, which okay. is amazing. So I kind of wanted something still with a bit of a kick, but also um, really refreshing as well. Are you home right now? It looks like you have a nice spirits collection behind you. Yeah, I am. This is my sort of a home bar. So I've got like four shelves of spirits and then another sort of like wine and champagne selection. So it's not as glamorous as the artesian, but for now it will, it will do. <laughs> uh, what kind of gin are you drinking today in that Negroni? Oh, so this gin, I'm using number three gin, so a London dry gin. Um, we've worked with them recently on a few projects and it's, yeah, it's one of my favorite, favorite gins. Cool. Well, I'm going to catch up with you real quickly and um, nice. a, a drink here. Um, it's just going to be a little rainwater Madeira spritz, um, a little burlesque bitters here. And we can put the recipe in the caption if anybody has questions. Burlesque bitters has a lot of hibiscus notes, a little acid cordial, and then equal parts Dorothy Parker gin. Nice. I don't think I've tried that gin. Oh, it's beautiful. It's very flora. It has a lot of hibiscus, which is why I'm using that burlesque bitters. Very soft and, and kind of fruity and, and bright. And then a little rainwater Madeira. Three quarters of an ounce. <laughs> it's daytime here. It's noon, so I'm going to start light. <laughs> Negroni would be a little heavy for me. And then I'm just going to top the soda. And a little grapefruit. Nice. Good to see you. Cheers. Cheers. So before we get into anything, I want to just catch up on what's going on at Artesian. You guys, since I was there, you guys hired a new head bartender. Um, you had amazing success with the Celebrate Her series. Why don't you just talk a little bit and catch me up on what's going on at the Artesian, and then um, we'll get into more of the current situation. Yeah, of course. Well, obviously, you know, we were, we had London Cocktail Week, and obviously had the great pleasure of having you guys here with us and try some of your drinks and the fried chicken, which was absolutely amazing. So we were really lucky, obviously, having yourselves and um, a few other bars sort of join us for London Cocktail Week. Um, we finished those sort of series of takeovers with one, like you said, called Celebrate Her, which is celebrating sort of females within the industry. Um, and then obviously Christmas, and I'm sure the same with you guys, it was just nonstop, just full every single night. Obviously, none of us could have knew that this was going to be the last sort of really, really busy season. And then we started the year off um, really, really strong. Just before Christmas, we hired a new head bartender called Marco Corello, who um, came from Dubai. I actually worked with him at the Savoy, uh, gosh, 2012. He was actually the head sommelier. So he actually not only has an amazing background of cocktails, but also this incredible palette for wine, which is really, really interesting when you see somebody sort of taking that into consideration with drinks and actually has quite a strong focus on our next cocktail menu as well. Um, so we started the year off really, really strong. Um, we were really sort of lucky that we won a couple of awards with Imbibe and Class Magazine. So the whole team was sort of in a really good place and we we're a full team. And as I'm sure you know, that's you know half, half the battle having a full team and the right people as well. Um, the last sort of big event that we did was actually for International Women's Day. And that was the last time that the bar was busy and the last big thing that we did because then, gosh, I think five days later, we closed the bar. So it was a very, it was a very, very surreal sort of time. Um, well, kind of nice to go out with a bang and kind of celebrate with industry friends. Um, unfortunately, the circumstances are not so great. So the bar is closed. We actually made the decision to close the bar the day before 
um, the government announced official sort of closure of bars and restaurants and theatres and so on. So the decision was made that we were, we kept everybody on. If we all kind of took a hit and took holidays and everything, then we would all be able to still have a job. Um, then on the Friday, it was announced that the government were putting into place a scheme called furlough, which I guess similar to kind of state benefits and everything as well. But it enabled all of us to stay together as a team, which was really, really important. And I know that we were really lucky that the Langham were able to do that for us because I know a lot of places weren't able to kind of globally what this is done it's almost been like this domino effect and it's this huge kind of trauma that is happening you know not just our industry but you know every industry it's this global sort of pandemic this global trauma and I think it sounds sort of dramatic but you have to kind of go through this process of adjusting because you know the life that we knew once of how this industry worked will no longer exist I don't I'm sure you must have felt something similar I mean, yeah, it's it's like every day here is a change. Every day is something new and seems like this is going to drag out for longer than we had expected. We're super fortunate as well because we've done the same thing in terms of, you know, furloughing all of our employees. And, you know, at the moment, what we're trying to do is keep everybody engaged, both our staff, the bar team, the servers, the kitchen team, and also... Uh, make sure everybody is safe and doing well. So we're doing things like this to keep everybody engaged. Are you guys staying in touch, doing any virtual trainings or online modules or little virtual happy hours for the bar team? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, staying connected is is so important because I, w- I was thinking the other day, I quite like my sort of like facts and statistics and everything. You know, if you think, say you take your average day in your bar, say you have 300, 300 covers, So straight away, that's 300 interactions that you have with 300 different people. Then you have your team. And then, you know, working in a hotel, say we have 400 people working each day. So that's immediately another 200 people maybe that you speak to. So you go from speaking to, say, just under 1,000 people or interacting with 1,000 different people every single day to interacting with zero. You know, this industry is an industry where people need us. They need us to make a drink. They need us to explain the menu. They need us to show them where the bathroom is. But, you know, all of these things are suddenly you go from being needed to not. And it's so, it's so strange. So I think, you know, staying connected with the team is really important. All of us, you know, we've got a big WhatsApp group that obviously I think most places have. But, you know, we've done a few sort of like Zoom calls or happy hours. Um, a lot of brands have been fantastic about creating sort of virtual training sessions, which people have done um, and completing. And we're doing a few things like um, we're partnering with Bacardi to do um, cocktails on Deliveroo um, for takeaway. So all of these things are great. And obviously, you know, because we were also meant to launch our menu in a couple of weeks, we're seeing if we can still launch it, but launch it virtually. Oh, wow. Cool. So just really keep the momentum going and keep, you know, people sort of inspired. We've got one guy that in our team, Adam, who sends out a really, really detailed sort of classic cocktail every day with like specs and in, you know, um, the whole history and everything as well. So little things like that make a big difference. And I think those check-ins are are really, really important. Yeah. I mean, for us, you know, it's, it's kind of tough. We don't want to have people come into the restaurant. You know, a lot of people live all over New York City and have to take the subway to get down to work. So we don't necessarily want to put people at risk by traveling to the bar. But you guys are in an interesting scenario. You know, you're in the hotel. Do you know the occupancy of the hotel at the moment? I'm assuming the hotel itself is still open. So we stayed open until the last guest left. And for hotels, just to give an idea, you know, you look at some of the great hotels, you know, the Ritz, the Savoy, Claridge's, all of these places, they, hotels have never closed. You know, even during World War One, World War Two, hotels remained open. So for a hotel to close, you know, we were, the Langham opened in 1865. For the hotel, this is the first time the hotel has closed. And it's just, it's, it's almost, it's so sort of, surreal and it was so sad just kind of just walking along these like empty corridors that you just sort of realize that it no matter how beautiful a building is or how much history a building has it's the people that bring it to life but I think also 
on a positive note because there is a quite a lot of you know negativity and it's quite morbid and everything at the moment but I think a lot of people have actually you've seen people start to take really good care of themselves like getting a good night's sleep um, exercising I don't know with, how with your guys if or with yourself if you've been doing anything like that as well yeah it's basically the only thing that I can do is <laughs> sleep early wake up early um, I go for a run every day. I try to do workouts in home, and um, with an exception of today, I, I <laughs> wait to uh, have a, a beverage until um, later on in the evening, so I can keep sort of a normal schedule. Um, but I do. I mean, I commend your team, and it's actually really inspirational watching everybody on um, the Artesian team. Um, following social media I think you guys do an amazing job individually at curating amazing social media profiles and um, really being a professional influence to the beverage community yeah thank you I, I mean it means a lot I think having good people around you and good yeah it's nice to see what everyone's up to I think everybody is just kind of really appreciating the small moment the silver linings in all of this and I think that's important to do because, you know, we ha this will change the face of hospitality and travel. Um, and we just don't know, like you said earlier, we don't know because things change so much. We don't know how, but it's almost like this chance to kind of rewrite the rule book in a way. And, you know, it will be really interesting to see, you know, will, will things still happen? You know, will guest shifts still happen? What will happen to, you know, award ceremonies? Like, you know, how... How is this all happening? But I think it's really good that you know, I've spoken to people at the Tales and um, 50 Best, and it's they're all sort of moving platforms, you know, virtually. And I think, um, I don't know if you've watched Asia's 50 Best Restaurants and uh, obviously bars is coming up. I thought, I think it's still really nice that these organizations are still recognizing people and bars and individuals. So I think it's really interesting to see, you know, people who have good business models will survive. and it, it's not just about surviving it's also about thriving during this time like we have to change and we have to think and you know we can't just give out free glasses of champagne to somebody anymore we, like how, how do we engage with that person i think that's been the coolest part of this whole thing is really seeing you really can get down and see the most talented creative individuals that are going to change the face of hospitality in um, the initiatives and the motives that they're doing during this time and the rising tide kind of raises all ships. So yeah. it'll kind of inspire a lot of new emerging leaders in the industry. And kind of on this point, is anybody in London doing any initiatives for employees that are out of work? Like there's a restaurant in Brooklyn, not too far from my house that is essentially giving away meals for hospitality workers. Um, we've got some great, great people doing some great things. I think brands are really, kind of stepping up in this time. With speciality things and being some story, they put together care packages for people and sent out, I think, hundreds and hundreds of care packages with, you know, groceries, pasta, washing up, like all of these things. Um, there's also the Drinks Trust, which are doing grants for people. Um, Diageo did a program as well to do grants. And see, like I mentioned earlier, Bacardi are doing something called Raise Your Spirits. So take your drinks recipe from your bar and then they are bottling drinks and selling that on delivery. So there's lots of sort of creativity. The guys at Three Sheets and Sun Tavern are doing some amazing things, Kalukale. So all of these bars are delivering sort of cocktails and stuff. The good thing is, is that we're all in this together. It's not one person suffering. It's that everybody has taken a hit, but, and it is also now it's, yeah, sure we need to survive and we need to be able to, pay rent or you know have a mortgage holiday or you know whatever it is but we need to be creative in order to get through this um and i think kind of it's stopped feeling like days off and holidays and it's actually okay this is real life and i think now people are actually being very sort of strategic and very kind of thinking well what can we do how can we change our business model I, it, it is it's it's quite crazy but um you made a good point you know this is the time that the hospitality industry really needs to stick together and stand by each other's sides to make sure that everybody gets through this and stays safe.
Before we kind of let you go, I wanted to ask if you were reading any books right now, whether that pertains to um, management or bartending. Yeah, there's a couple of books I'm reading. I tend to like to read quite a few books all in one go. One of the books that I'm reading is a book called uh, The Art of Flipnosis. And it's a really cool, if you're into psychology, it's really, really interesting because it talks about like the power and the art of persuasion. Like how can you persuade somebody to do something in that split second. Um, the other book that I really love um, that we actually just got sent just before we closed was um, the Schofields book as well of their classic cocktails. So really sort of enjoying sort of reading that as I love my sort of classic drinks. Um, I've been putting also on my Instagram just books that I've either been reading or books I really love like sort of selections because it's always nice to sort of go back and read something like Little Women or Rebecca or you know one of these sort of old classics. Are you doing anything else um, when it comes to non-work related or educational related things? Any home workouts, any activities that you would recommend or suggest to some people at home? Yeah, definitely. I'm like, I'm quite, I've, I've got a bicycle. Um, so I've been cycling, going to like the parks that are still open. To be honest, the roads are pretty quiet as well. So just like, even though sometimes I really don't want to go out and exercise, it's, it makes such a difference. So definitely sort of getting out my bike. Um, I'm doing a few like wine videos on my Instagram, just really for fun. It's supermarket wine, but the supermarkets we have, it's really sort of good wine, drinking well for less. Um, so that's just a bit, a bit of tongue in cheek. Um, and just really just sort of doing all the stuff that I haven't had time to do you know in the last 10 years like i don't know applying for a driver's license and things like that there you go nice <laughs> so. amazing well anna it was really good catching up with you cheers thank cheers, you for taking the time i hope to see you soon bye yes.